gonna happen again. Yeah, we'll see. Which one? The McGregor Mayweather fight. They're gonna do it again. Really? Yeah. Make more money, huh? Yeah, exactly. Uh, make more money. Good morning, guys. Morning. McGregor doesn't care if he loses. Oh, thanks. The money that's gonna come from a Mayweather fight? Yeah. Not that he even needs any more money. He's doing good now, dude. All right, so, um, got a, just a safety uh, meeting today for HVAC technicians, so, Especially for people who are new in the in the industry, you know it's it's obviously uh, it's a good career move for a lot of people. But working in uh, as an HVAC te technician, um, th there's always a, a lot of safety risks that you need to think about. For uh, for this reason, technicians must be aware of safety guidelines that only experienced heating and cooling companies normally uh, worry about. So always bear these in mind. <clears throat> so working in the heating and, uh, heating and air conditioning industry, uh, they need to learn how to assess situations before jumping into a task in order to identify any hazards or safety threats. <clears throat> so here's some of the, uh, by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend professionals working around and with electrical currents also take up additional electrical safety training. Because um, obviously we do work with electrical uh, <clears throat> on a, semi-regular basis. So one must consider taking either like some type of short electrician training or electrical sa safety precautions at least and uh, spend time getting when you when you're spend spending time getting a job done don't rush it. Make sure you assess situations and uh, first try to prevent any winded up uh, injuries. <clears throat> so knowing what you're working up against with when new, when you're new to the profession, for example, identify any hazards so that you can take essential safety precautions before you begin. Spend time getting getting the job done. Don't rush the job. Uh, double check your equipment. <clears throat> On a typical day, HVAC technicians may have to work in multiple job sites. For this reason, double check your equipment and know the required tools for every job order. A few of those necessary tools include wire strippers, wrenches, vacuum gauges. Make sure that they're functional and and for safety and efficiency. With properly working HVAC equipment, you can also reduce the chance of an injury when performing repairs, maintenance, and installations. Gas cylinders and trucks. HVAC technicians' trucks can have a temperature reaching at least 100 degrees in the summertime, and when combined with the heat generated by the R410A gas cylinder, pressure can reach up to 366 PSIG. For example, a large 1,500 square inch gas cylinder can generate pressure of up to 549,000 PSIG with such hot temperatures. The cylinders can take off and explode like a, rock, like a rocket if it's damaged or if it fails. So always watch for out for extreme high temperatures in the summer and be extra careful when working with or around gas cylinders in HVAC trucks. Always watch out for high summer temperatures and extra careful when working with around gas cylinders and HVAC trips, trucks. So when you have your um, gas, how do you strap your gas, Renars? The rubber, uh, like, uh, so bungee. bungee cord, and it stays pretty pretty yeah. sturdy? Okay. Because the last thing you want to do is them running or falling around. I've heard of some things, I mean, I've never seen it happen. I don't know anybody personally, but I've heard of somebody's gas tank blowing up in the back of their truck and actually putting a hole in the side of the truck. Um, it got so hot in there, and it was just rolling around and just exploded. So you want to keep those things, you know, t either tied down. You can use um, safety straps. There's, there's just a ton of stuff you can use, good, strong bungees. Um, you can ratchet the things, you know, in a corner if you need to so they're not going anywhere, but you want to make sure they're secure. And then one of the things that, um, you know, I've, this is, again, just something I've heard. I've never had to deal with this myself. But when we used to work in uh, a different industry, or I did, in the pipelining industry, and Iggy's familiar with this, we used to have, sometimes when it got too hot, your epoxy, we had epoxy in our truck. Okay, so it's a different story. It's not going to blow up, nothing like that. But it would ruin our epoxy or make it very difficult sometimes if it got too hot or too cold. We had to make sure it stayed at a pretty good temperature. So sometimes we wouldn't just leave it in the, in the vehicle. We'd put it in a garage or put it in you know, somewhere where it would stay at a decent temperature so that it, because if it gets too hot, like if you're, you have a part A and a part B, if one of them gets too hot and you mix them together, start mixing them together, they just go off like that, and now you, you have no time to work with it. So um, just a temperature thing is what's, what's similar there. So keeping your temperature, if you see the truck's going to get a, you know, it's a real hot day, it's going to get over 100 degrees in there, you know, you can always take your, 
your gas and put it in the garage while you're working in there and then put it back in the truck. They're not that heavy, they're pretty easy to move around. So that's just a suggestion for uh, safety reasons. Um, or if you have a way of keeping windows down in those trucks, you don't usually in the back have, a, have windows or a way to keep it down, so it's just going to stay hot in there. Um, <clears throat> put your safety first. Just like in other professions, there are risks involved when working with air conditioning equipment and tools. The new air conditioning technician should always put safety first. So before working, you should always wear protective gear, something you might have taught you might have been taught, or if you intended at welding school, uh, a few a few gears, a few gears HVAC uh, HVAC technicians need. Some of the gear the technicians are needed are face shields for protection from dangerous HVAC liquids and chemicals, respirator respiration gear when unsafe and contaminants exist, and hard hats when working in areas where there's some falling objects and or low lying beams that might pose hazards. Work shoes and, and boots for protecting your feet from falling or heavy objects. Proper clothing for protection for the hands, skins, and body from harsh temperatures. Earplugs for protection against hearing loss, especially when working in areas where there is at least, at least a decibel of 90 decibels or, or higher. So uh, safety glasses for stopping flying objects and debris from getting into your eyes. Okay, so I was talking to William actually lately, and I'm going to have William just kind of tell you something that happened to him. Um, from what he, he was doing commercial systems and tell me what ha tell everybody what happened uh, with you William and, and your hearing and why you weren't wearing hear protection and then what has happened to you since um so this was this wasn't the commercial place um, this is actually the aer aerospace company um, so we had uh, uh, we had package units um, with very strong fan motors um, I, I think there were like five to six horsepower or something like that and we often um, adjusted the voltages on the TXV to get it to perform at a certain temperature that uh, we, we needed. Um, and as we bend, you know, as we, we reach over to make the adjustments, the, the fan motor is blowing directly into our ear. And, um, you know, over time it, it does cause um, some damage to your ear. Um, so, you know, so safety, safety, uh, Equipment is very, very important. Um, if if you have the safety equipment, then you should be using it. And if you don't have it, go get it. I mean, you're hearing. You guys have two sets of ears, and, and I, um, I have one of my real good friends is an audiologist, and um, you know she can't. She, it drives her nuts, but she pe sees people or hears about people who do that type of thing. And when I heard about uh, William, and we kind of talked about it a little bit. You're listening to loud equipment sometimes when you shouldn't be listening to it. It's not like you need to listen to anything in particular. You just want to get you want to keep the sound away when you can. Um, I know I, I, I see some people doing kind of the opposite of that. They'll put in their earbuds and they got the music cranked up so dang loud that they're doing the same damage to their ears, you know, as if they had their their ear next to a big motor or a loud motor. So you know you only have one set of ears, guys. Just like one set of eyes. Protect them. You know, wear goggles, wear a shield if you need to. Um, make sure you're you're wearing earplugs or earmuffs, whatever you know you have. I don't care which, whatever you prefer. But when you get out of that area, take them off. You know, they have strings on them nowadays that you can do them, or you can just put them around your neck. There's a lot of different things you can do, but protect yourself. You only have the one set. <clears throat> Additional safety tips. Once again, um, making sure your HVAC equipment is clean, updated, and doesn't need replacement. Making sure that you don't get you don't suffer from an injury while working with worn out or broken equipment. Uh, make sure that anything that needs replacing gets replaced, and so you can stay safe yourself. Um, making sure that uh, whenever you have any kind of equipment or even protection protective gear, making sure that it is in good condition. So, you know, if you have goggles that are all scratched up or whatever, or face mask, you know, replace them. Uh, wear protective and safety gear to avoid any kind of health issues. When you're up in attics, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things you can wear depending on the type of, you know, uh, insulation you have up there. Wearing gloves when you're working with insulation so you don't get the glass and, you know, certain types of insulation have that fiberglass in it. Um, so making sure that you're wearing, you know, respirator or at least a mask to keep that dust out of your, your nose. I, I, I've been up to my attic many, many times and sometimes like for only 10, 15 minutes, you know, I mean, I'm not up there nearly as long as some of you guys are up there. 
and I come out and blow my nose, and I just the dust that I don't even realize is in there. It's just it's bad, and I got that spray and crap in my my attic, which sucks. You move that around, and you just got dust everywhere. And you can't see it because it's dark up there. But just realize that you're getting stuff in your lungs, and then you know you do that on a daily basis and a regular basis. You never know what's up there. There's asbestos in some of those attics that are older. Uh, in addition to, a lot of times there's animals, rats, you know, mice, whatever, and they their feces and everything is, you know, you're just bacteria, viruses, all kinds of stuff that you can be, you know, breathing in. So wear masks whenever you're up there, just to be safe. I know it gets hot and all that good stuff. Make sure you have water when you're up there and during the summertime and all those good things. But, you know, you don't want to be inhaling all that crap. It's not good for you. Chemical safety. Make sure that, um, you know, you're be being very careful of any kind of liquids that are cleaning liquids or detergent, solvents, refrigerants. Uh, a lot of those things, if you inhale them or mishandle them, they can be dangerous to you. So make sure, you, again, you're wearing gloves, protective equipment. Uh, if you're wearing anything that can burn you, you wear the, the proper gloves for those. Um, and then also when you're storing or transporting chemicals, make sure that, you know, the lids are secure and you have them in a place where they're not going to fall over and spill all over the place. And then you, you know, end up putting your hands in them or stepping in them or anything like that. Uh, it's better to be aware what's going on and rather than and then rather than regretting it later. So if you don't, if you ever have a question about any kind of chemicals or issues, uh, chemicals or, or products that you carry, make sure you ask somebody. We do have, um, you know, our, our uh, some of the vehicles I think still have them in them. Some of them, some of them don't. They um, what is it? Your right to know, which is basically the uh, MSS VR. You know, the, the, basically for chemicals, it tells you what's in the chemicals and what they can do to you. <clears throat> um, always put safety first when working with and around heating, cooling, and air system and tools. Wear your protective gear, assess the situation, take notes when there's the hot time for temperatures, and make sure you have adequate knowledge of any chemicals that you may have in your vehicle. And if you need any additional training or help, make sure you ask your employer. And you can always look at the MSSDS and uh, if you have any questions on it. We have all of them here for you uh, in the shop, and you guys should also have some in your vehicles as well. Any questions? Pretty simple. Does everybody please sign a little form here? Okay, I'm going to be um, out of town Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I'm going to the HVAC thing for Gary Pacific in Texas. So um, they have a whole a day of seminars that I'm going to learn a little bit more about the HVAC stuff myself. And then they they have a day where we go into the tour their facility as well. So can I come? <laughs> you sure, Texas? Yeah. Come oh, on, oh, head out. Oh, I'll buy the ticket. Yeah, I'm 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 already uh, basically the the Gary Pacific actually pays for us to do all of this, but so it's already set unfortunately. But it's normally just for either owners or managers. It's not something that they usually bring tax with, as far as I know. But um, anyway, so. Any information that I get, that I'll, I'll bring back to you guys and share. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting learning a little bit of information that I don't know. That should be neat. The main fact side, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, that's about it. Um, so there won't be a meeting from me on Wednesday tomorrow. There'll still be one from Kevin, I believe. He'll have his uh, training, um, and I'll we'll have to see if, if Kevin has anything going Wednesday or Friday. Well, you know, I'll let him make it. A, determination on that for, for a meeting on Wednesday and Friday, which we normally have, so um, I think that's it, guys. All right, so make sure you get your time, shirt, time sheets in so we can get payroll going today, and I appreciate it. Thanks.